Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. That's not fog behind me there. So today I kinda wanted to do something a little bit different. The fog back there is actually smoke. If you uh, watch the news at all, if you don't, good for you. But uh, California is basically on fire. It's nothing new, it happens every year. We're used to it. Um, but this is something that I built a while back and I just wanted to show it to y'all. And it's uh, something that I always have on hand and, and keep close and always make sure it's working well. So that's what we're gonna do today. Make sure it's up and running because uh, you never know when fire is gonna come and it's always good to be prepared. So let me bring you in a little bit closer here and we'll uh, check out what I did to this thing and talk about the unit itself. And then also these little frilly things I got going on here and what they do and um, my whole setup, really. So what we have here is uh, my fire pump. I'm gonna say that with quotations because technically it's not a fire pump, it's a semi-trash pump and I've set it up to be a fire pump. I'd rather have something rather than nothing, and this is a fraction of the price than buying a fire pump. Um, those things are pretty badass, but uh, like I said, much cheaper this way. So let's go over it real quick. It is a uh, WB20XT. Uh, I bought this used a while back. Um, it didn't have this whole setup going on here. I seen someone that had pretty much this exact setup and copied it. This is a two inch pump. It, um, I wrote it down here just so I always know, 136 gallons per minute, a head of 105 and a suction of 24 feet. So I can have 24 feet of suction pipe on there. Um, what I've done to it is added this whole setup here. Basically what these pumps are made to do is just dewater. So you put it into some sort of water that you want to move and you move it. This compared to a fire pump, a fire pump's gonna have a lot more pressure. I believe, I've, the research I've been doing, this has 45 pounds PSI and a fire pump is gonna have more than that for sure. Uh, but what I did here, basically <clears throat> the factory um, end here is a uh, NPT, National Pipe Thread. And so I just added the T and the 90 and then put these fire hose connections on there. Uh, so this is two inch 90 here, two and a half inch fire hose, and then reduce that down to inch and a half fire hose because that's what I use and carry with me with this pump. Uh, put this spigot on there just to kind of have it um, so you could have another hose running off on the side along with this. So that's basically the the head part of it, the discharge. And then on this end here, the uh, suction end, I did add a, um, it's called a cam lock fitting. Now, I guess we can move over to the accessories. So this is the suction pipe. I went with a cam lock set up here. Um, you can go with the thread style. This is just a little sample that I'm using to show y'all. The problem with these is that the pipe, you know, can get heavy and it's not as flexible. And you have to use hard pipe for your suction because if you use like a fire pipe or a lay flat or anything like that, it's gonna, when it sucks, it's just gonna suck it flat and it's not gonna work properly. But back to this. I just don't like them because the pipe's so heavy and then you're trying to twist this and get your threads right and all that. It's just, it's not, it's not worth it to me. I'll spend the extra and, and go for the um, cam locks. The other end of my hose here, I have this short section here. Um, that allows me to disconnect this. Of course, it's, it's been on there for a while. And then I am able to hook up to my uh, tank up at the house with this end here, which is uh, very uh, convenient to have. That way I can just plug this into the tank, plug it into here, and I'm good to go. On this section here, for situations where I'm pulling out of the pond, 
I don't want to lose my suction on the unit and this is a uh, foot valve and it'll one-way valve and it'll close when the unit's not pulling and it'll keep water from draining out of the pipe so that when I start it back up it uh, just always has pressure behind it and I'm not waiting to prime. This here, it, it's basically just my little hokey pokey um, flotation device so this thing's not sitting directly on the ground. It's got a little bit of buoyancy. Now we get to the, uh, the outlet side. I try and keep everything contained. Uh, just got these three different things I gotta grab if I need to. Um, the suction, the pump, and the hoses. Right now I only have uh, 100 feet of hose. I want more, but fire hose is not cheap. One thing that I do have, pretty nice, is a um, inch and a half NHT to uh, three quarter hose. Uh, NHT is the fire hose thread, um, national hose thread, and it just goes on there. And then I can connect a uh, garden hose up to that end and, and go a little bit further. This thing says 105 feet ahead, but I can go pretty far with a uh, garden hose on there. I would be able to keep a fire down while I'm waiting for, you know, the fire department to get here. But yeah, I'd just rather be prepared and uh, not have to rely on someone and just sit there and run around with a chicken, like a chicken with my head cut off, waiting for someone else to come and help when, if I can at least start attacking it while I'm waiting, that would be nice. Not many things keep me up at night, but other than my kids and, uh, and fire. Um, the nozzle here, I actually scored this when I was working at a recycling center and uh, works out pretty well. It's an Acrom brand. Uh, came from an old fire department in town. It was definitely been road hard. Kind of leaks a little bit, but it gets where I want to go. So now we kind of went through all the equipment. Let's uh, dunk it in the water, fire it up, and... Uh, I'll kind of show you, like I said, all my little trinkets here and what I use them for. That's the setup, pretty simple, easy, everything I got's right there. Then this bottle here, I just keep, I don't wanna, if I need this, I don't want to have to be looking around, looking for things, uh, scavenging, trying to find what I need in order to make this work. Uh, in order to use a trash pump properly, you need to prime the pump. You don't want the pump to run dry. You're gonna have an easier time priming it if there's already water in there. Basically, you take off the cap here, just have this bottle on there, and I can just fill it up with some water and dump it in there. It usually takes the whole thing. Make sure that gasket stays on there. Don't want to lose that. Now, another thing I would suggest, if you haven't already purchased one of these, I would... I wouldn't go with any off-brand. Don't go to your Harbor Freight and get a pump if you're gonna use it for this type of situation. If you just need a pump for some other, you know, just moving water or whatever, but I'm kind of relying on this unit. That is why I went with a Honda. Um, I know it's gonna start every time. This thing has not been ran today or in the last week, and I know it's gonna start at least on the second pull. Hopefully while you're all are watching. <laughs> But yeah, just it's worth the money to buy something that you can rely on every time. Choke on, fuel on. And then I'll grab the hose here and just kind of keep it kinked a little bit so I have a little bit of back pressure here. I probably don't need choke, it's kind of hot out here. 
Okay, number one thing to remember, turn it on. <laughs> So that's my little setup, just to be prepared. Always have it kind of around and ready to go. Especially when I'm working out here, um, I don't have any running water. I have this pond and the ditch up there. I kind of always have it set up if I'm dragging around here. That way I can, uh, if I hit a rock and a spark happens or something like that, I can get to it right away. I'm not uh, running around looking for some way to put it out. That's the way I stay prepared. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Hey guys.